So hi, it's Dave. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've done an update, but before I do my update, I just want to say thanks because I've got 5,000 subscribers and I'll be honest, I never thought I'd get 10. <laughs> I never even tried to get 10, to be honest. I put the videos up and it kind of spiraled from there. So thank you very much for all your support. Thank you for all the messages I get. Thank you for the emails and YouTube messages and um, thanks for all the help I get as well. Um, and I hope you guys are getting help from my videos and I'm probably helping at least 20 odd projects as well around the world. Um, so where I can help, I absolutely will do. But um, yeah, thank you very much, 5,000 subscribers. Who would have thought? Anyway, update. So I think I left the last video, uh, I was bending aluminium into boxes. That worked brilliantly. However, brazing the aluminium didn't. Uh, if I come down here, I was, um, if you imagine I had another piece here, wanting to braise two sheets of aluminium together, it just didn't work very well. This would, would bend under the heat um, and give you a very poor join or a very uneven join. Um, I tried heating up all the metal, I tried bracing it down and fixing it, but it just wants to bend. You know, you're heating up metal at the end of the day. So the reality is, I don't think brazing is very good at sheet aluminium um, brazing. It's great if you've got little repairs or corners or things that aren't just a big sheet, you know, have a bit of integral strength. So, you know, if this had some corners in it to give it strength so it couldn't move, then that would be all right. But just a plain sheet, it just warps out of all, all um, possible ways of looking very good. So what I bought, if I can find it somewhere, where is it? Over here, yes, what I bought is a rivet gun. Um, not sure if it's a gun, but I call it a rivet gun because it makes a kind of a gun noise. Um, I don't know if you guys have any seen one of these, but you can loads of videos on how these are used. Basically, drill a hole in what you want to rivet together, stick a rivet in there, fire it through, and um, all's good for the world. So this box down here, which is my front battery box, you'll see I've just riveted it together around the corners. It's not finished yet, as you can see. I'm going to put some um, aluminium corner pieces in here, rivet those together. Um, put it all together there, but as you can see there's brazing in there. This is the brazing I did which is very poor, I'm not happy with it at all. Um, but it's, it's okay, it's not ruined the box, I can still use that box, that's fine. But if we come around the back of the car, you'll see what I've been spending most of my time on. Ta-da! I've actually got the batteries in the back. So this is my aluminium box, um, you'll see the batteries in there. There's the rods that go through uh, from one side to the other, there are four of them, two at the front, two at the back of the batteries. And if you've taken apart or seen any videos about these, you'll know that these batteries are compressed slightly. Um, so I've got two, uh, the compression plates are here. These came out of the Nissan when I took the battery pack apart. I've cut one of those in half, so I can have one there and one that side. You can't see them, they are, they are tucked in there. I can get in there, just see it on the edge in there. So as you can see here, there's a gap. And that gap is because when I put the batteries in, they fit, but then you compress them by about 10 mil. Uh, I know it's about 10 mil because this, which is the original leaf connection system, uh, doesn't fit when they're not compressed. So you know when you've compressed the whole batteries enough because that orange connector strip actually then fits. And it doesn't fit if you haven't compressed them. So that's good, it's worked pretty well. It's been really difficult because if you can imagine you've got to get this rod in, which of course there isn't enough room to have the rod out completely, so you have to have the rod in, put one battery in and slide it down, put another battery in, slide it down. Fun and games when of course this now weighs probably the best part of 100 kilos, so you can't really move it, it's really, really heavy. It did take a little bit of damage here, it started the compression as, as crushed here. I was hoping it would move all the batteries to the side and not damage this, but um, it has done, I'm not, I'm not that bothered. Um, you know, the plate's still doing its job in there, which is compressing the batteries down. That little bit of warp there has meant that this, this is not quite as flush. There's a little bit of a gap under here. But again, I'm not really worried. that It's not meant to structurally fit them snug as a bug, although it does <laughs> pretty much. Um, you know, it's a bit of protection from any elements, from any kind of mild damage, and to stop them all obviously moving around in the car. So that's doing its job absolutely spot on. So I've got my two connectors there and there which will wire up to the car eventually when it's ready. Got my BMS in. I'm probably gonna leave that on its side, to be honest. That's how it is in the original leaf, although it's tucked around the edge. Um, and that's kind of why it wants to sit that way. The cables are just kind of naturally sat that way up. I've got a twisted pair 
uh, CAN bus wire that goes to the front of the car uh, to plug into my Arduino. So that's going to give me the communications to the BMS so I can have some information about you know what it's doing, is it balancing, is it well, all the things you've seen in my other videos about the BMS. Showed in the other video uh, about I've moved the battery, so that's the 12 volt battery in the back. It's not there at the moment, as I say, had to remove that to get these batteries in. There really wasn't a lot of room to get them in. Um, other things I've done, you'll notice here, uh, two power cables going the length of the car now. They go through the um, tunnel where the gearbox is and the motor at the front. They are riveted using little brackets to the side all the way down and they come out here and what I've done is, if you imagine, I've, I've cut a hole like this here but to stop the wire from getting cut on these sharp edges I've 3D printed a little bracket, the wires feed through so they're obviously they're not going to catch on metal, they're going to catch on plastic and not get damaged. I've not finished this one yet, there's only one wire here and there's obviously going to be two. Uh, the wires are, these two go to the inverter which are going to go to the power distribution module these two are from going to be from the front battery pack which are obviously going to connect to this battery and the uh, relay system which is going to sit here for switching the system high voltage on or off the power distribution module this bad boy is going to live here it just about fits um, and interestingly the connectors for this are underneath i uh, won't show that now but the connectors are sitting under here which of course is difficult when you put it in the boot. So I'm actually going to put it on legs and I've just got some bolts here. See these bolts? What I'm going to do is I'm going to, they're about 90 mil long and I'm going to have them coming through the boot, uh, coming up. I'll then screw them into the BMS, uh, sorry, the power distribution module, not the BMS. There's about, I think there's five or six holes under there that it'll screw up into. I'll have two nuts, so I'll then screw one nut up and screw one nut down and it'll hold each leg in position and that will sit here floating about 80 mil off the bottom which will give me space for my cables to go and if you imagine these will be connected underneath where the, the pins come out for the power distribution module lovely um, so not actually a huge amount to do here the, the other wire for this is already very close to being pinned through it's just a bit horrible working under the car and uh, drilling holes and getting covered in bits of metal and stuff but uh, that's looking really good um, up front oh actually just before I go up front I've sprayed the two cowlings for the exhausts here and here so they're now a nice black colour uh, in the back of this one I have a mesh as I tried on video before you can't really see it but uh, you can kind of see it better there and I've just no nails it so I've used a whole load of gunky no nails to put that mesh on the back it just gives it a nice finish um, yeah, so that's cool. And I'm going to do the same for this one. I just haven't done it. Working with this blooming stuff is evil stuff. It tries to cut your fingers at every moment. Um, so I've been putting off that job of doing the other one. And I can then put those cowlings back on the back, uh, which would be good. That'd be just another job ticked off. Have I done much more up the front? I'm not sure I have actually. Other than I've obviously got these wires now which go down the tunnel, one there one there and there's one there and one there those two are for the inverter which is obviously going to sit on top I've started um, doing a bit of preparation for the uh, cooling system as well but I'm not very far down with that at the moment that's still to come I've cut the front of the car here do, 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 do. this section just needed to come out a couple of inches of, of uh, bodywork there um, because that's where the battery box slots right up and a bit of preparation with the steel so this steel is going to run across there and the same this side if I can get the camera from there to there and that's going to be the basis of where the, the uh, bracket for the battery box is going to hang off it's going to go across there, it's going to go down and along and then see that bracket there that used to hold all the radiators on and there's one this side as well and they're just bolted onto the underside of the car so what I'm going to do so you're going to have this bracket going down, along, and it's going to bolt into where that's bolted. So I'll unbolt that, bolt it underneath, bolt it underneath this side, and I'll have a nice cradle with a, with a, uh, a bit of steel going across that the battery box can sit on. And that should be pretty secure, to be honest. Uh, here's the CAN bus wire that's going all the way down the car to the boot. Um, so kind of lots done, really, lots done. Uh, oh, gosh. 
Lost the camera. Uh, lots done. Um, next things to do are I need to start working at the front, really getting some of that battery box and the steels done and the support, and then wiring it all up. Is that it? God, that sounds a bit scarily close, doesn't it? Okay, well I'm going to crack on. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.